This was a bridge that uh, kept coming off, a Bruxer bridge, uh, and it wouldn't stay on. And now the dentist has uh, reprepped the case and took a new impression and sent it back into us. Here's the impression. Um, we can see the margins, which is nice, but you've probably, you probably know what I'm going to say already, that we're not big fans of three unit bridges in plastic double arch trays like this, or even metal uh, double arch trays. And that's just something we've learned from our own remake rates and from Gordon Christensen. We do see to see, do seem to see a lot of bridge remakes uh, higher than normal when they're taken in double arch trays like this versus a um, you know full arch maxillary impression here of the preps, a full arch a mandibular impression, and then a bite registration. So it limits us uh, a little bit what we can do. Let's take a look at the models for this case. And you can see it's a kind of a funky bite here. We definitely have uh, class three tendencies um, over that distal abutment on the bridge. And even here, that tooth is kind of tilted out, but it's almost an edge to edge. When we look at those lower anteriors, you can see all the wear that's been going on there. In fact, it looks like that uh, pre-existing uh, central incisor here, tooth number eight, had done a lot of damage to that lower anterior. Perhaps it was an old PFM crown that just kind of chewed through there because when you look at the wear compared to the anterior teeth, we definitely see more on that, but could just be the wear pattern. But certainly this is somebody who's done their fair share of uh, bruxing in their uh, 76 years of life. And so Bruxer is a good choice here. You know, a three unit anterior bridge. The first thing that might pop in your mind would be an Emax press bridge except for the fact that Emax is contraindicated in patients who brux. So really, Bruxer is the right choice. In fact, anterior Bruxer uh, would probably be strong enough for this, but uh, if we are in fact worried about fracture, uh, regular Bruxer, which is what the doctor prescribed, would go in here as well. So this is going to be a tricky one to do. There's enough reduction there uh, to do a Bruxer bridge. The connector height, we're going to have to make sure it's rule of 27 compliant, but I think you can see already that uh, that's a pretty big dimension if we go from where the tissue is here down to here we've got at least five millimeters so and in the anterior uh, the rule of 27 um, is actually a little bit overkill compared to the posterior where it's actually mandatory because of the much higher bite forces uh, in the mandible we can see um, well you can kind of see if you look at the uh, solid model you can see there's a flipper so it doesn't really engage uh, at all. It just kind of sits on the lingual of this and there's no clasps. There must be some wrought wire clasps uh, in the posterior. And these are the new preparations that the, uh, that the dentist did. And uh, we always look in terms of retention. There's a couple things going on here. There's the fact that zirconia is more difficult to get a good bond to than say a traditional, um, you know, sub traditional ceramic like Emax, zirconia is a little trickier. But then we also just have to look at the prep length um, itself. You know, we talk about short preps, long preps, usually, you know, four millimeters is what we use as kind of a cutoff uh, for making that determination instead of just using, using words. And it looks like we have four millimeters there. It looks like we have four millimeters there. We definitely have uh, four millimeters there. If we uh, look at the lingual, that's a really nice prep. That's a really nice prep. Look out, see how the uh, gingival third right here uh, goes straight up and down instead of just, instead of this concavity um, going all the way down to the gingiva that we see a lot. This wall right here, the way the doctor has prepped that straight up and down on that gingival third uh, is going to give us some mechanical retention when it opposes this wall on the facial. So it's really nice when you're able to do that. Um, most of the time when I lecture or do hands-on clinics on the reverse prep technique, we talk about not using the round burr here unless we have a high cingulum. And in those cases, if we have a low cingulum, we just use that 856025 burr so we can develop this vertical wall. This is the only mechanical retention you really get on an anterior tooth preparation because the rest of this is going to be done uh, as a concave preparation with a football burr. So nicely done. Big margin, a margin that's you know deep enough. This this kind of deep chamfer or shallow shoulder uh, would be adequate for Emax. Emax unfortunately won't be tolerated in this situation because of the parafunction habits of the patient. So could have been for Emax, but Bruxer does not mind a deep margin like that as well. We look at the margin here, and it's a little deeper on the facial and the lingual, and then it gets a little thinner here, but it's not even. It's a mild. Uh, shallow chamfer here and a little shallower here, but not even a feather edge. So Bruxer will be okay with that. If we take a look at the height on this prep, 
this is where we see we're going to have some issues. So I can imagine this bridge being in place, not really having an issue here on the central, um, but it's over here on the lateral where we're going to have some issues. So if we measure this, yeah, see we're at about two millimeters right there. Here, that's a little tougher to measure because look how tapered that wall is. So if you look at it and draw a line across from here, from the top of the prep over, you go, yeah, we've got three, a little more millimeters there. But this whole part of the wall is pretty non-retentive. Um, the whole prep kind of slants that way, but we're really not getting much retention except for in this bottom one, maybe 1 1.5 millimeters there. A little better on the facial and um, on the lingual. Again, where I'm having to lean the perioprobe way over to kind of come in contact, but it, we do have four, four and a half millimeters there. But you can just see kind of how short that prep is. Now, because of the patient's bite, we can't just lengthen these. It's not like we can just do buildups and add to the length of those preparations. This one looks adequate. You know, it's going to be a little bit longer um, than the uh, lateral incisor next to it. So that, that's pretty good reduction. I don't have a problem with that tooth. It's this one. It's this preparation where we don't have a lot of retention. I'm sure where that bridge was wiggling loose. Any thoughts of double abutting it? Well, we've got one of our flipper teeth right here. It does appear that we have a crown here. It looks like there's some separation between the flipper and the crown, but now we're adding two units and maybe what, $2,200 of cost to the bridge for this 76 year old patient who probably just would love to keep it at three units, if at all possible. So we really can't build up the preps anymore because of the bite. But if I look at this untrimmed model, I can see the margins on the central incisor pretty clearly. And I can see them pretty clearly on the lateral incisor too. And this is one time where if I don't want to get into crown lengthening, certainly crown lengthening will give us the opportunity to grab onto more uh, tooth structure on both of these. But if we don't want to do that, this is one of the cases where I will go subgingival. Going subgingival, and I mean, I'm always going half a millimeter subgingival. I'm talking two millimeters subgingival here, deep subgingival. It's a periodontal compromise, but I always feel like on a, somebody like a 76 year old male, that's not the bigger problem, the bigger problem is his front teeth falling out. And so I'm going to go subgingival and grab onto all the tooth I can here, uh, possibly even creating a biologic with violation if we're not going to do the crown lengthening ourselves and send it out to a periodontist. We might only need another millimeter or two of tooth structure here and then straighten up these walls a little bit to be able to keep this bridge uh, in place. So. It looks like we still could take advantage of some sub subgingival tooth structure, and that's going to be our suggestion to the dentist who called and asked and said, hey, what should we do? I've reprepped it, but you know, I'm, I'm open to suggestion. We can't really do a reduction coping for something like that, um, so we'll have to see how open he is to dropping those margins further subgingival. You could do it here as well because it looks like we have an equigingival or maybe just a slightly subgingival in part margin, so there's certainly some more tooth to grab onto there, but it looks like this lateral incisor is the bigger problem out of the two. The other thing would be to make sure that we are in fact using um, as strong of a cement as we can. If you didn't want to use a total etch technique, I would use a um, self etching resin cement. So that's going to have a separate uh, AB primer that needs to be mixed up and put on the two. So that would be Multi-Link Auto Mix from Ivoclar Vivadent or Panavia 21F from Curare. Both of those are self-etching resin cements that are going to give you the highest bond strength without having to go through all the total etch steps. You would try the bridge into the mouth, make any adjustments you need, decontaminate the inside of the zirconia bridge either with a sandblaster or Ivo Clean from Ivoclar Vivident and leave it in for 20 seconds, rinse it out. Then you would put a zirconia primer in here such as Z Prime Plus for 20 seconds and air thin it. Um, is a good choice, or you could use Monobond Plus from Ivoclar as well, 20 seconds and then air thin it, and then go with either of those cements, the Panavia 21F or the Multi-Link Auto Mix, and then bond that onto the two, spot cure it, clean up the excess, and then go through the, the full light cure, it. and they're both dual cure material, so they'll cure, cure on their own as well. And that's going to be about as strong as you can put this on. It's hard to say whether or not it's going to be enough without lengthening that central incisor, but I guess that's where our no-fault remake rate uh, comes into play. And it's nice when it falls off like this and you don't actually have to uh, uh, cut it all the way off. Um, although I think last time it did take some tooth and then the doctor subsequently built it up and we might be able to see that buildup line right along there. So um, 
I would prefer, if it were me, to see this drop down subgingival here. I'm less worried about that than I am about this coming off this uh, poor older gentleman. Again, I'd like to grab onto a little more tooth and then make sure after we try this in, we decontaminate it, use a zirconia primer, and then put it in with the self-etching resin cement, and that should give us our best chance for success.